Hi, right, it's Gadget UK here. It's just a really quick video. Um, I'm tearing this ST down at the moment just to do the 16 megahertz uh, mod, um, or attempt to do the 16 megahertz mod again to it. Um, someone on asked me um, a question, um, and this is a resp video response really. Um, they said they were getting a black uh, black screen with a white board. I'll show you exactly what's happening with this. I'm going to switch this on. Uh, I'm assuming that's exactly what you're seeing, where he's getting a, you know the white border there and a black screen. And the interesting thing is, um, I didn't intend in actually recreating this scenario, but just having plugged the power in here, you know, board on its own, switched it on, sort of expected just like a you know a, a white uh, screen with a clicking sound because the keyboard's not connected. Um, I got that black border, and the reason being is because I've got my RAM disconnected. Um, you know, you can see this is where the Marpet normally goes. So these, these two headers here, and there's usually a switch. Um, but um, yeah, that's what you get when you've got no RAM, or you've got RAM faults, or something wrong with the RAM, you know, the uh, address decoding or something that's related to that. So one of the th things that this uh, chap has been advised is to reseat all his chips, and that's a good advice when you get this problem, there's nothing really wrong with the system. Um, I'll just switch it off. Um, reseat the chips. Um, as you can see, none of these are socketed around here. Um, you can't do anything with those, but like, you know, my CPU, I've socketed them myself, it's just a case of just pressing down, making sure it's firmly in, you can actually lever it out with a screwdriver, uh, just a little bit at a side, you know, half a millimetre, half a millimetre, half, you know, on each side, alternate um, sides until eventually you can lift it out. Same with uh, these toss chips, and if I just press these down, can you hear that click? And that one? And again? And again? That one's alright. Um, and it's the same with these, you, you may have these spring clips, you may not, but just pressing down on them, just making sure they're firmly in there, you know, with your thumb. You don't need to put too much force on. Um, and the same with the MMU, you won't, probably won't have this little bridge body and it'll be the same, it'll just be probably held with a clip anyway, so it'll probably be okay. And then the other one is under here, um, I'll just see if I can get in there now just to show you. Yeah, so as I shown on the previous uh, ST Teardown video, you just have a little but it bend those little twists there, uh, as you can see you've got video shifter which is socketed. Mine's got this little board here, the, the normal scenario will be just this chip straight in the socket and again it's just a case of just pressing down, making sure it's, it's in the socket. Beyond that there's not much more you can do really other than looking for any of the chips that are in these little, you know, you can see the socket, it lifts it off from the board, it's you know, plastic, whereas you know these you can clearly see no socket, no socket, there's nothing you can do with those at all. Um, so it's going to be similar in, uh, in your ST. Um, if that doesn't work, then you're looking at. Uh, so you can get this out without electrocuting yourself. Just get the power. Yeah, if that doesn't solve it, you're looking probably at a faulty RAM chip. Um, I mean, it could be the glue chip, um, it could be the MMU chip. The glue chip's more commonly faulty than the, uh, the MMU. But um, I mean, you can actually physically reseat these. You know, don't you know? Maybe giving up at that stage is not the right thing to do. If you press them all down and it's still not made a difference, you need to get a P PLCC extractor. And in order to use that, I don't really want to demonstrate it now because there's a bit of a risk. You can scratch the chip and damage the chip and all the rest of it. But these little metal clips, these, you know, they clip off. If you bend bend it one side, um, it, you'll be able to get it off. And then you'll have a, a couple of holes in the very corners at the top of the chip. And you can get a PCL, PLCC extractor, and it's just like a pair of pinches, really. You just stick them in the holes and squeeze it, and very, very carefully prise the thing out while you hold it. And it's, it can be a bit challenging to do that, but eventually you'll get it out. And then you can just put it back in, make sure you get it say, the right way around. There's a notch on these that shows where pin one is. Um, I can't see it now on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do that just to reseat them. But, uh, and it's the same, like I say, as these, these chips. You don't just press it, pressing them down doesn't work. You could actually lift them out, lever them out gradually with a screwdriver um, and then push them back in. You've got to make sure you don't bend the pins and you get the chip the right way around. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, like I say, you're probably looking at faulty uh, RAM. Um, not much you can do about that, really. Um, you could try the piggyback, uh, as I mentioned in my ST teardown video, you could try the piggyback approach. Get one of these RAM chips, you know, piggyback it on there, just if the thing powers up with its, um, you know, piggybacks on there, as long as it's making a good physical connection. Um, if that works and your problem's gone, you've probably found the faulty chip, uh, so you could, like, say, desolder that, put a socket on there, stick a new one in. Um, I should have done this while I had the ST um, apart, really, um, just to show you. But, uh, you know, and I did describe it, but these dip ch chip chips like this, where you've got the pins down the side and the socket, um, yeah, it's just a case of, like I said, just get it in between the um, socket and the chip. 
Um, sometimes you might need a finer screwdriver than that. And just gradually just lever it a little bit. And then lever the other side a little bit. You know, and this is the key. If you're going to use a screwdriver um, rather than a, a proper extraction tool, just do it um, a little bit at a time. You know, sort of half a millimetre. So that's what happens. It's a bit easier than that. Uh, and sometimes you've got to, use, it depends which side, you know, you've got to alternate sides. Try and do it in the middle, you won't always get uh, perfect leverage. Um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's stuck in this corner here a bit. So it's a case of, uh, you know, sort of just, just levering that side on its own, just make sure you support the rest of the chip while you lever it. There we go. Final step, just to get that side down. Sorry, it's not easy. One hand does. So you do it with two hands, you can support it where it needs support. It. There we go. That's there now. And you can see the pins are all nice and straight there. And that's the key is to not bend the pins. Um, and whenever you take these out, um, you can see there's a notch there. And there's a notch on the, marked on the board there. Sometimes it's marked in the socket. So you've got to make sure you you know you put it back in the same way. Um, and just make sure you've got all your pins. When you do these dip ones, the best way to do it is to align. You can see that line one side first. So all the pins are definitely in there, you know, visually inspect it, then check the other side and sort of, you know, put in a bit of pressure onto the, the, the opposite opposing side. Just make sure that all the pins are in there like that. They're all lined up, you know, double check it and then just press it in. And that's it. Um, and with the PLCC sockets, I mean, you know, um, that, that's the same sort of chip that you'll see in those, sorry, that, that's the same sort of chip you'll see in those, um, those the, the square sockets, the PLCC ones, the MMU and the GLU. And you'll notice this has got a little notch there, that's just pin one, and it's marked on the board, pin one. Um, and you'll see a similar thing in the socket, the socket there should be a little notch somewhere or something. Um, and you, you often find that these have got like a little bend on one side, um, I think that's on this, this corner here, and the socket will only have a little, you know, the, the little sl sliced off bit corner there to accommodate that so you can only put it in one way correctly just make sure you you've got it the right way before you start to you know push it back into the socket um, I'll just show you the PCLCC extractor tool this is a PLCC extractor tool um, as you can see if I just squeeze this you'll see if you watch the end of the pincers see how they sort of pull in towards you know up towards the thing um, the, and these are cheap ones it pays to get a good set of these if you're gonna get get some you know these were like I don't know two pounds or a pound or something just not very well made. You can see if it's, you know, put them next to each other like that, they're not very well aligned, they're not sort of centre, and it's just cheap plastic with some cheap uh, steel or whatever there. But the way this would work, you imagine the, the, the socket around that chip, this one's just sold to board, but on, if you look at the ST um, and then you and you know, you've got a socket that surrounds that, um, you'll, you'll find there are a couple of little uh, gaps. There'll be a gap probably in this corner here and a gap in that corner there. Um, when I showed them on the video there, they, obviously I've got a spring clip just covering that so you couldn't see them. And those will fit through the holes and go underneath the very edge of the chip there. So that when you squeeze it, it will grip and pull the chip upwards. Now the key is not to just put, press squeeze it like that, because I found that if you, if you squeeze it and just keep squeezing it, they can slip off and you, they'll slide across the top of the chip and scratch it. Um, which won't damage it permanently, well, it won't, it's just cosmetic damage is the point I'm trying to make. But you, it's a case of, you've got some cheap ones like this, it's like, say, you squeeze it, put them in, push them all the way down, make sure they're totally, totally, totally underneath the chip, and then squeeze it until you've got a good grip, and then just gradually try and lift lift the thing up, you know, pull it, um, and just, if you if you need to, just sort of lever it to one side just a little bit, and to the other side a little bit, just until eventually it comes out, um, and then, like I say, you can just literally pop them back in with your thumb, you know. But make sure you get it around the right way. Um, I honestly do not like using these cheap uh, PC PLCC extractors, and you can get a similar thing for the dip. You can get what's called a dip extractor, and it's very similar to this. And again, you would just stick it like that and squeeze it and lift the chip. But I actually, I don't like using a dip extractor, and I'll tell you why. It's not so bad on a small chip, you know, you've got a chip like that, maybe, it's, you know, well, I don't know, something like that perhaps. But when you've got like, these larger dip chips here, you imagine, you know, you've got some sort of contraption like this, and you, you know, you're squeezing it, to, um, you know, to grip, grip and stuff, and then try and lift. Will you try and pull in an even distributed way so that you're pulling directly up and not to one side or the other when you've got a wide um, chip like that? It's, it's not easy. You've got more chance of damaging the side, the pins and things, and it pulling one way or the other. 
Um, and you need quite a lot of force as well. It's like, I don't know, I, I still think, I'm still a believer that the best way to get these dip chips out is with uh, you know a screwdriver and just do it a tiny, tiny bit each side, each side, you know, and micro, uh, you know, lift it out basically on each side. Um, but don't do what some people, well, I've seen people do, is where you stick a screwdriver on one side and lift it up by about 30 degrees so that, you know, this chip's like up at that angle because, you know, where these pins here will just be like bent to, you know, uh, beyond all recognition. Uh, and that's not what you want to do. That's why I say just do it in small, small increments, you know, half a millimetre, half a millimetre each side. So what I'm doing here at the moment is trying to find a 16 megahertz clock on the actual board itself. Um, my original approach was, I'll just get it. And this is a mess. I've done all sorts of things to this. This uh, just temporary. It needs tidying up the wires. Needs shorting. The caps need removing. The crystal needs removing. There's all sorts of crap. Really, it's just, it's um, you know this is the prototype 16 megahertz mod that I've been working on. Um, that 16 megahertz crystal is the problem there because and um, I thought about this from day one. I wasn't really sure whether it would be a problem or not, but I think it's not synchronised with the original 8 megahertz and any of the clocks that are on that board on the main board for that matter. So as a result when you when it switches over when the assertion when it's asserting etc and switches back it's um, I think it's overclocking it, it's like thirty odd megahertz or something that's causing the CPU to glitch. So it you know it doesn't work or it does work for very, very short periods of time. So so short you wouldn't even notice it was actually working for uh, that period of time, so I need to remove that clock off there and take 16 megahertz from the board. Now I didn't realise there were 16 megahertz on the board, or well, that's the approach I would have taken from day one. But uh, after having uh, you know asked some questions and things and searched around, uh, Exxon, um, nice guy on the Atari uh, forums, has um, helped me um, work out where to look for a 16 megahertz clock. So he mentioned the shift chip, and um, I found that that pin there, second. From the end there's, it, ooh, I don't know if it's a 40 pin, it's going to be pin 39 isn't it? Um, yeah, that's 16 megahertz I think. I'll show you, if we just, I've got a scope. Um, what I'll do to start with, I'll just show you the 8 megahertz clock. So that's the normal clock pin going to the CPU. And you'll notice we've got, it's not a particularly uh, well formed wave bias. It's probably a combination of the probe and um, I haven't calibrated it, you know, this little um, Trim pot there that probably needs twisting to get some, uh, uh, you know, better um, shape to that signal. But anyway, as you can see, so 8 megahertz, we've got one division per uh, cycle there. And if I just jump onto the other pin, which is I think this is from 16 megahertz. Yeah, I think that's looking like 16 megahertz. You've got roughly you've got two cycles there within one uh, each square. So that's the 16 megahertz clock as far as I can see. The amplitude's uh, very similar as well, we've got two blocks. Oh, let's just check that one again. Yeah, so that, that's okay. I'm going to give that a try with that uh, pin 39, uh, see how I get on. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you soon.